On today's episode of Monday Maps, I'm talking all about clouds. More specifically, I'm gonna show you how to create this top view look of clouds on a map. And in this specific example, I'm gonna be using a premium extension called GeoLayers 3. However, you do not need this extension to do this technique. You can create clouds in native After Effects with no plugins using the same step-by-step -step breakdown. As always, if you wanna learn more about map animations, check the links in the video description for my masterclass and my Patreon page. Okay, I'm inside of Adobe After Effects and I've got my GeoLayers 3 map comp set up. Once again, if you don't have GeoLayers, you can just use an image of a map if you like. And for the first step, I'm gonna create a new solid layer. So to do this, go to Layer, select New Solid, and you wanna change the color to a white naturally. I'm gonna do 90, which is perfectly fine. I will rename this Cloud. And what I like to do is make this a little bit larger than my comp size. So the current comp size is Ultra HD 4K. So what I'm gonna do is do like a 5,000 by 5,000. Now, I'm not gonna be zooming my map here. If you are gonna zoom the map, I suggest you make clouds at different zoom levels. I'm gonna go ahead and click OK. Now I wanna to start to draw out some of the shapes of the clouds. So I'm gonna grab this solid layer and then select the pen tool, which is keyboard shortcut G. And now I will use this tool to quickly draw out some little polygons that will essentially be my clouds. And don't worry too much, you can always customize these at a later time. In fact, we'll probably wanna animate all these vertices if you want a really dynamic look. Okay, so we have a couple of different shapes here. Now I'm gonna hit the F key with my layer and that's gonna bring up the mask feather. And I wanna be able to quickly control the feather of all of these masks. What I like to do is just parent all of the feathers to one. You know, probably the best way to do this would be to create like an ex a slider expression control. And what I can do here is just set the feather to something like 75. That's probably gonna be good. For the next step, I'm gonna add an effect to this layer called Turbulent Displace. So go to Effects and Presets panel. If you can't see it, go to Window, select Effects and Presets, and then type in Turbulent. You'll see here under Distort, you have Turbulent Displace. Add that to your Clouds layer. And there are really three main settings that you'll wanna play with. That's amount, size, and complexity. Now you can go absolutely crazy with this effect and customize it forever. For example, you have all these different displacement types. I'm gonna go ahead and leave that at the default turbulent. And all I'm gonna do is turn up the complexity. So complexity goes from one to 10. And if you crank it all the way up to 10, you immediately start to get what's looking like pretty good clouds here. So these three main parameters here, amount, size, and complexity, you, you can you know just tinker around with these until you get a look with which you are happy. All right, these clouds are looking good. To make them look even better, I'm gonna add some depth here via a shadow layer. So with this clouds solid layer selected, I'm gonna go up to the edit menu and select copy with property links. Now, once I paste, if you hit Control or Command V, it's gonna paste an entirely new clouds layer that will be attached to the original. So now if I hit Enter, I can rename this shadow and I'm gonna turn the visibility of the original off so I can focus on this and make sure it's a proper shadow. Now to make this a shadow only layer, I'm gonna to go to the Effects and Presets panel and search for Drop Shadow. And now I will add this to my shadow layer and then click on Shadow Only in your effects here. And now adjust this as your heart desires. We wanna bump the distance way up, something like that. Maybe soften it up a bit. And now if I turn the clouds layer back on and put it on top of the shadow, you can see we now have a little bit more depth. And why did I do copy with property links? Well, I did that so that if I go back to the clouds layer and I start to adjust any like property on it, it's gonna have the shadow layer connected to it. So when I go to animate this, it's just gonna make life way easier. I won't have to like adjust everything at the same time. So if you open up the shadow layer and look at the effects here or any of the, the parameters or properties, they're all connected to the original cloud layer via these property links. Now, none of this is attached to my map in GeoLayers here. So to do that, I'm gonna first turn these to 3D and then I'm gonna parent pick whip these to our clouds map comp anchor. Again, if you're not using GeoLayers 3, simply connect it to a null or to your map layer, however you wanna do it. Now, if I go back to the GeoLayers panel and I change the pitch and the bearing a bit, you'll notice that these now move with your map. And it's still looking pretty cool. It gives us like this 3D look, but I, let's say I wanna have another 
like little layer of depth here. I want to have some parallax and I want these these clouds to be pulled up a little bit. I want to control the altitude of these clouds. Well, to do that, just simply grab your cloud layer and hit P for position. And if you start to play around with the Z parameter, if you turn it down in the negative, you'll notice that it starts to pull these up. And if you want to do it with your widget, just make sure you have the local access mode selected. Don't do world access mode, do local access mode and hover your mouse over. And if you grab the Z here, you can like really start to pull it up. But we have a problem here and that's the fact that our shadow is moving with it. I want my shadow to be stuck to the map. So to do that, well, the, the real reason it's it is because the shadow is still property linked to our clouds position. So just hold alt and turn that expression off and that's gonna zero out that shadow. And zero Z space, having this set, set to zero at Z space, basically means it's exactly flat with the map. And now if I go back and grab clouds and use the widget here, now I can control these separate. And if I crank it way up, now if I change the pitch and the bearing, you will indeed start to get some parallax, which is very, very cool. I used to do, for about a year there, I was making map animations for this YouTuber named Ava Zubek. She's super cool. And we were doing these cloud animations like at the intro I had clouds and it really helped to amplify the movement as I did these fly-ins and it just gave it a super dynamic look. Okay, things are starting to really come together here. We have our nice cloud edges here. We have a shadow. We have our 3D parallax action going on. Everything's attached to the map. One of the things that's kind of bugging me is the fact that we have this really solid washed out white in the top of our clouds here. So I wanna add a little bit more detail have some texture and some contrast in here. So for that, I'm gonna add a new solid layer, which I will call texture. And now for this, I'm gonna add an effect called fractal noise. And if you don't know about fractal noise, you really need to learn about it. It's great for creating textures and different animations. So here's what you get by default. There are a thousand different types of looks you can get with this, but let's just go with the default for a second. And the way I'm going to apply this I want to apply this texture to my cloud layer. So to actually do that, I turned off the visibility of this layer just so I can see. I'm going to grab the clouds layer and I'm going to search for an effect called texturize. And if I apply that here to the clouds, it allows me to select a layer for the texture layer. So if I go to the drop down menu, I can select my texture fractal noise layer that I have here and nothing happens. That's because you have to go to here and you have to select effects and mask because I have applied an, a fractal noise effect. So once it does that, you'll start to see something happen here. Okay, so now you have a little bit of a texture here, which is already looking pretty darn cool. You know, you could go with this look, but there are a thousand different parameters you can play with now. You can play with the texture contrast. You can change this here. Now I'm gonna go back to my texture layer and here as well, if you're aware of how fractal noise works, there's all these different parameters. So you can play with this for like weeks and get all kinds of different looks. But I'm gonna go to fractal type and I'm gonna select cloudy because if I didn't do this for this tutorial, it would kind of be criminal. So go grab cloudy fractal type and the default here is not gonna look too good, this uh, soft linear. So for noise type, I'm gonna switch that to spline and there you go, now we're getting something that's a little more dynamic, but be aware of your frame render time, okay folks? Sometimes you gotta pay to play, and that payment is in render time. Now to bring these clouds to life, I'm gonna jump back down to the clouds layer, and I'm gonna add some keyframes to our offset property right here. But before I do that, I wanna make sure that my texture is connected as well. So if I go up to the fractal noise, and I open up transform, you'll notice that there's an offset turbulence property here as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and open both of these up. Let me full screen this. And now I'm going to attach the offset turbulence right here of our fractal noise on the texture to the cloud layer. Now everything is going to stick together. And now I can come back here, grab the cloud layer, add a keyframe for offset here, and then go to the very end and just add some movement here. Maybe we want the clouds to be moving from left to right. You can see the render time went up even higher. All right, I'm gonna render this out and see how it looks. 
All right, not looking too bad. However, there's a lot of room for improvement still. So for example, I wanna speed this animation up. So I'm gonna speed up my offset animation here. I'm also gonna trim the work area down because it's taking way too long to render this out. There's actually another thing I wanna do. I'm gonna add more movement within the clouds here because they're still a little too static. So there's two main properties one on the texture and one on the clouds that I can animate to give it a little bit more movement, and that is evolution. And you've probably seen this in a lot of other tutorials where they'll do like a time expression. So that's what you can do here. You can play around by adding a time expression or manually keyframing this evolution. Now the evolution of the clouds here, if I just turn this, it's gonna drastically change the turbulent displace, which is the, um, the edges of our mask here. And you can see how, t how long this is taking to load now. This is very, very render intensive. Let me just turn this down so this will be a little bit punchier. So this will give you a lot of drastic change uh, on your edges, whereas with the texture, if we mess with the evolution here, that's gonna give us changes within the texture here. So we can just play around. I'm just gonna add a quick expression, time times, uh, let's just do 15 for both. I think that will be okay. All right, now let's take a look. Let me show you one other thing that's really cool. Let's say I want to break up this cloud here. It's just a little too big and it's looking like a big solid blob. So I'm gonna go and grab the clouds layer. I'm gonna grab the pen tool again. And now I'm just gonna draw another mask kind of right in the middle of this one. Now nothing happens. I'm gonna go and hit M to look at all the mask. And I need to grab this new one, mask five, and switch it to subtract. Now it's gonna punch out a hole there. And to match up the feather, I hit F for feather. And now I just need to property pick whip the new feather to the first one here, and that's gonna match that feather. And as a last step, I am going to copy this mask and paste it on my shadow so that that shadow matches. Very, very cool. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you wanna learn more about GeoLayers, I have a GeoLayers 3 Masterclass, which I will link to in the video description. If you're a super hardcore map nerd and you wanna follow along with all these tutorials, I have exclusive tutorials that I do for patrons over on my Patreon page. I will also link to that in the video description. And I have a new premium GeoLayers 3 course that I'm working on right now. It's gonna come out in a few months. If you wanna learn more about that, I have a mailing list you can sign up for. I'm gonna be announcing the pre-release date or the pre-sale date where you can get discounts and just find out other information. So go check out all those links down in the video description. And I'll see you in the next one.